You ever think about why your neighborhoods back in the suburbs don't really look like this anymore? Well, it comes back to a little bit of class segregation, and that comes back from white flight, a little bit of segregation. So if you don't know about it, white flight talks about the large scale migration of white people from areas that are becoming more racially or ethnoculturally diverse. This migration has often been from urban areas out to suburban or exurban regions. Those are typically more homogenous in terms of race and race and ethnicity and how much people earn. One of the theories that was developed to explain white flight is the concept of a tipping point. That was first proposed by uh, political scientist Morton Grosden in the 1950s. According to this guy, once the proportion of non-whites in the neighborhood exceeds a certain threshold, whites start to move out. And this threshold is referred to as the tipping point. There's a great deal of evidence to support the idea of a tipping point in relation to white flight. For example, in England, there was a study that was done on census data in 2004 that found that white flight was occurring in inner city areas, and that led to an increasing isolation of ethnic minorities from the ethnic white British population. Then if you look at the US, a study of census tracts conducted in 2018 found between 2000 and 2010, something like 3,000 census tracts out of like 27,000 tracts experienced white flight with an average loss of 40% of the original white population. So why do people do this stuff? What drives them to leave their homes and communities in search of a more racially homogenous like, area? That's weird. One theory that was proposed to explain white flight is the checkerboard model. It was developed by economist Thomas Schelling in the 1960s. According to this model, even when somebody prefers to live in a mixed race neighborhood, almost complete segregation of neighborhoods can emerge as individual decisions accumulate. This, his tipping model showed that members of an ethnic group don't move out of a neighborhood as long as the proportion of other ethnic groups is relatively low. But if a critical level of other ethnicities is reached, the original residents might make rapid decisions to take action and leave. This tipping point is viewed as simply the end result of a domino effect originating when the threshold of the majority ethnicity members with the highest sensitivity to sameness is exceeded. These are like the people who get upset on Twitter. If these people leave and they're either not replaced or replaced by other ethnicities, then this in turn raises the level of mixing of neighbors, exceeding the departure threshold for additional people. What? Another theory that was proposed is a different tipping model, which suggests that people don't move out of a neighborhood as long as the proportion of other ethnic groups is relatively low. But if a critical level of other ethnicities gets exceeded, the original residents might make rapid decisions to kind of take actions and, and leave. That tipping point, remember, it's viewed as the end result of a domino effect that gets triggered when the threshold of major ethnicity members with the highest sensitivity to sameness gets exceeded. So what can you do to address this issue of white flight and its consequences? One solution is to kind of create policies that encourage more diverse housing patterns and promote integration. This can involve measures like affordable housing or building new homes in efforts to combat discrimination in the housing market. Additionally, it's really important to address the underlying issues that contribute to white flight. We're talking about racism and economic inequality, which is widespread. Only by under addressing these un underlying issues can we kind of create a more inclusive and diverse community for everybody. And we're not doing that today for sure.